This grass tree is literally just that, a tree made of grass. This trunk, all grass. There's just something I love about grass trees. I find them very beautiful and interesting and they're very beneficial in the bushland where they grow naturally. G'day, I'm Karen Marie. Thank you for joining me out in the bushland today. In this video, I will introduce you to this species, Xanthorea precii, locally in the Perth area known well as Belga or grass tree. There are a number of Xanthorea species and they only grow in Australia. This species, Xanthorea precii, is very common in the southwest of Western Australia from around Geraldton in the north through to Walpole in the south. So Xanthorea comes from two words, Xanthos meaning yellow and Rio meaning to flow and it refers to the yellow sap that flows from the ends of the leaves. Now they are a very slow growing plant. They grow about one to one and a half centimeters every year. And I'm about 163 centimeters tall. So this one is well over a hundred years easily. Each layer of trunk is made up of flattened leaf bases. So these are the ends of the leaves at the other end these leaves are flattening out over time and it takes around about 580 leaves to create one year of growth on that trunk. So they can grow to be more than three meters tall up to about five meters and the flower spikes when they grow they can be up to three meters tall as well. Sometimes a smaller grass tree can be a lot smaller than its actual flower spike and they have the ability to veer off and branch out as well creating more branches not just the single trunk. The tree can grow one flower spike per crown of foliage. These ones near me haven't flowered this year however here's some footage of some flowering xanthoreas. They flower in spring and through to early summer and when the flowers do begin to come out on the flower spikes, they actually come out on one side first, the side that is facing the sun. So these can be used a bit like a compass because when they've begun flowering, you can assume that the flowers are on the northern side. Here's some footage of a young flower spike and the tiny individual white flowers growing on the spike. Each flower spike can contain thousands of flowers. So naturally they attract a lot of animals that feed on nectar, such as insects and birds. If you're fortunate enough to come out at the right time of year, early enough in the morning where the nectar is nice and fresh, you can run your finger along the flower spike. Be careful of bees and other insects though that might already be feeding. Um, and I've tasted that, it's actually quite delicious. I'm now in January and they have pretty much finished flowering. Most of the flowers have dried out, there's no nectar left in them and they're beginning to form their capsules. Now fertilised flowers develop into these beak-like capsules. They're quite spiky so they deter some birds to prevent them from eating the seeds. However, ring neck parrots do pluck them out and eat them. Also weevils and other beetles burrow in and eat the seeds. And the seeds are released in summer or autumn anyway when the capsules open up. And after about one or two years, the spears will fall from the tree and any other seeds remaining will fall to the ground. Now, the reason I said it's highly beneficial in the bushland is because it has a number of benefits for animals and humans. I've mentioned some already, but there are a whole lot more. These trees were very useful to the Noongar people who are the First Nations people of Southwest Western Australia. They would make torches either out of the flower spikes or out of the dried leaves. They would also thatch together the leaves with twine made from Hardenbergia, which uh, if you didn't see my Hardenbergia video, I'll put a link up for you to watch that one. They would thatch them together to make roofing for their shelters. Apparently they used the gum from the flower spikes to make cakes. The skinny flower spikes were used for fishing spears because they floated and they were called a Gigi. There's actually a town near where I'm filming called Gigi Ganup and that means the place where spears are made. 
some beetle larvae will burrow into grass trees and a favorite bush tucker is known as the body grub which is the larvae of the longhorned beetle it could be either eaten raw or roasted in some hot coals and if you're picturing a little grub picture it a little bit bigger it's probably about that long and fat and juicy so a number of insects eat the leaves and animals shelter in the leaves. The old leaves stay on the plant and form into what we call a skirt. This one is missing its lower leaves because they've been burnt off in a fire. You can see the blackened trunk that's from the fire. And so these older leaves have grown since the fire. Where the grass tree skirt reaches all the way to the ground, it creates little habitats for smaller animals, lizards and insects. Sometimes it's just sandy and dry under those leaves. In other situations, it might produce a bit of a moist microclimate where fungi and lichen and moss like to grow. Now, if you think that grass trees are beautiful as I do, you might be pleased to know that you can buy them in nurseries or you can get them from a business that salvages them from bushland that is earmarked for clearing. I've got one in my garden that was salvaged from an area that was cleared for housing and it's done quite well. They will give you instructions on how to maintain and look after the tree, particularly in the first couple of years. It's really important so they get established and survive well. Now in their natural environment, grass trees do grow very well out in the open rather than in the shade of the canopy of trees. So if you do plant one in your garden, give it plenty of space so it can be in the sun. Well, that about brings me to the end of this video. I take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land as the Noongar people. I filmed this video on Noongar Budja that is Noongar country or Noongar land. I thank you for watching this video. Please share or subscribe or give me a thumbs up if it feels right for you. I'll be back soon sharing more interesting facts about our beautiful bushland on life in the bush. I'll see you then. I have to admit I found another use for this end of the leaves once when I didn't have a toothpick, came in really handy.